Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome. Today we have the Galaxy S23 FE and uh, welcome to my gaming review as well as also some camera talk on this device. Now, the FE devices disappeared for a little bit but it's finally back and I think Samsung made the right decision in bringing the FE back. Although there's some questionable decisions in what they actually put in the device but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so the FE comes in at 6.4 inches. We do have a display that is 120 hertz refresh rate, uh, maximum neat brightness about 1450. It's a really lovely display. It looks absolutely gorgeous. You can see Gojo right there. Yes, JJK fans, if you want that Gojo wallpaper, follow me on Pinterest, you will find it. There's a link down there in the description. Now, display out of the way, it still is a really nice looking phone and I do like the new color sets that they have. Samsung has multiple colors and there's also some custom colors you can get directly from samsung.com. So if you want to, use the link in the bio to pick this device up. Now it's a triple camera setup, but the main thing we wanna talk about first is the processor. Now, if you're in the US, you're getting the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Yes, 8 Gen 1, you heard that correctly, not 8 Gen 1 Plus. While internationally, you're getting the Exynos 2300. So you're wondering, okay, look, why did they go with a processor that was not fully light last year? The 8 Gen 1 Plus really did a really good job. And I think it just probably comes down to pricing of the processor and also pricing of where they wanna put this device in. But how does that actually compare in terms of performance? Are we getting anything good, bad, terrible? What are we getting here with this device? So when it comes to our Geekbench 6 scores, we're looking at a single core score of 1,716 and a multi-core score of 4,145, which is you know, pretty decent. It does, I would say it's pretty solid overall, comparable to what we got last year, but also better in some respects. So for instance, it actually clocks better than the Galaxy Z Fold 4, which has an 8 plus Gen 1 processor built in. So that's actually good to see there. And also clocks higher than even uh, the uh, Xiaomi 13 uh, from uh, this year. So that is something to take note to say that, look, this is actually well optimized for this system. Now we do have a 4,500 milliamp battery, but of course you guys are here first for the game. So let's start off with the games we like to play. First looking at Call of Duty Mobile and the max settings we can go here for maximum frame rates is um, uh, low settings with ultra. And here we're getting 89 to 90 frames per second while gaming. Now you've seen, of course, with devices that have the 8 plus Gen 1 or the 8 Gen 2, we're getting about 120 frames per second. Uh, that's what we're getting here with, uh, with this device. It still runs really smooth, solid. Uh, really, of course, the real estate is really nice to play game on as well on this device. Now we will move over to PUBG Mobile and starting off at Ultra HD Ultra. Uh, we're getting what we should expect, which is 40 frames per second, which is nice to see, uh, very much in line with what you expect. Now, when we move over to Smooth Extreme uh, and or uh, Extreme HDR, we're getting about 57 frames per second. This is a little interesting because normally uh, with devices this year, we were getting a solid 60 frames per second across the board, but this is again running eight, uh, 8 Gen 1. So we're getting 57, which, Although devices from last year did about 60 frames per second. So that's just something to put a note on and put a pin in. Now, let's move over to the game. Of course, you guys are would expect to really task the system, which is Genshin Impact. Now with Genshin, I had two very peculiar readings and I think I, it actually shows while gaming. So I had a gaming session for about 20, 25 minutes. And on the session, it ran 60 frames per second smoothly all the way through, uh, which most devices just don't do that. So I did run it again and I ran it for about 50 minutes a second time. And uh, my benchmarks came to about starting at 60 frames per second and uh, roughly around the uh, seven to eight minute mark, it started dropping down and we ended up at 48 frames per second on here. So that is something uh, to note with it. Still runs Genshin Impact as I would expect to with the device that's H and one. But the key thing here are temperatures. Now, maybe because they might be uh, some interesting things that Samsung is doing here where we don't know, 
But the maximum temperature I got was 103 degrees. That's it, 103 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's it, nothing else. Um, which is quite impressive because usually we get like 109 uh, or more. So there might be some throttling, there might be some things Samsung's doing in the background, I think, to keep those temperatures managed as much as possible, but also trying to keep the performance uh, as close to what you would, would like to see. So that's actually pretty good. Now, one more game I actually included into this whole breakdown is uh, a game called Snowbreak. I did ask a bunch of you guys what game I should include. And I decided to include this here and I went with the max resolution for this 60 frames per second, max out everything here. And on this game, I was probably doing around uh, up to about, uh, about 47 to 50 frames per second on average. Uh, it started off high and then dropped down a little bit. So this is one to actually see how newer uh, processors handle. But again, this handled well and temperatures didn't even get to 103. Now, so when you look at gaming as a whole, this device actually does a really good job for something priced at $599 uh, here in the US and roughly around $545 in, in Europe in terms of performance and gameplay that you would expect. So that was actually really nice to see. And I think also when you're asking about battery life, you're gonna be getting some substantially solid battery life overall on the device where uh, I was able to use it for a full day without any issues, go from around nine o'clock in the morning all the way to about 10, 11 at night before I needed to fully charge. So that's also a good thing to see that the battery management on this device is pretty solid. Now you're gonna ask me, what about the camera? Well, they have a new camera system on here, uh, for at least for the FE devices, where the main camera is a 50 megapixel, you've got an eight megapixel telephoto, uh, and you've got a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and then the selfie camera is 10 megapixels. So instead of me talking, how about you guys to take a look at what the camera actually brings to the table? I think the camera performance is solid overall, uh, and I think that you're seeing something very similar to what you find with the S23 itself. And the whole package actually brings a lot to the table. Now, another thing Samsung included in here is wireless charging onto this device. So it does have everything you expect from a Galaxy S23 device. It's just that certain things are just not the same. So for instance, we don't have um, Gorilla Glass Victus. We have Gorilla, Gorilla Glass 5 on the device. Of course, it's not an all metal build. Things like that, of course, are the things that Samsung has taken away to make this more comparable. But I think overall, you're going to like the Galaxy S23 FE. If you're a fan of the FE series or you just want a cheaper Galaxy device that has a better processor, the Galaxy S23 FE is the one for you. Now, I don't know how the Exynos version will perform, but I can tell you if you're gonna be getting one, definitely do, do get the, uh, the Snapdragon version. At least you know the kind of performance you're getting there. So guys, there you have it. That is the S23 FE. Gaming on this device is solid and it's definitely worth picking out. If you have any questions or any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy the entertainment.